Welcome to the Elevate Your Brand podcast, where we help online coaches learn how to elevate their brand, become the experts in their industries so they can bring in more clients and create a life they want. I am your host, Chris Anderson. And if you want to make a difference in the lives of others, share this episode, go over to Apple Podcasts and follow us there to leave a positive rating and review. And together we can leave a bigger positive mark on the world. Today, just going to hit on the importance of overall exercise on our health. And again, disclaimer, and I'm going to read this. This episode is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Please consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise program or making any changes to your existing routine. The content in this episode is not intended to be definitive guide to the most effective types of exercise for improving overall health and well-being. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new exercise program or making any changes to your existing routine. Okay, got that boring stuff out of the way, but it has to be said. This is just my opinion and how I see it. Now, I have a background as an athletic trainer. That's what I did before starting my business. But again, talk to your doctor before you make any changes. I just want to hit on the essential components of overall health and what you can do, from my opinion, to better that. Exercise is just a crucial piece to your overall health. And when you feel good, when you look good, everything else improves. Your actions, your confidence, your relationships, your business, everything stimulates from your health. Because if you don't feel good and you don't look good, your confidence goes down, your actions go down because you don't feel like doing anything because you just want to lay around and feel better. So that's why it's so important to take care of yourself, take care of your health. And uh, yeah, so let's dive into it. There are a lot of different ways that you can exercise out there and improve your health and well-being. You all probably know cardio. Cardio is a good activity that you can do to help your heart health, improve your overall cardiovascular fitness. These are things like running, cycling, swimming, walking really fast if that's where you're at. And that's okay if that's where you're at. Just something to get your heart rate up, get your breathing a little heavy, and makes you work. So with improving your cardiovascular health, helps your heart pump better, more efficiently, gets more oxygen to your blood. This, of course, can lower the risk of heart disease, and things of that nature, high blood pressure, diabetes. So it's an important thing just to work, get your body working at a point where it's, you, it's a little bit hard to talk. You can't talk real easy. You're maybe breathing a little heavier. That's when you know you're at that good level. But it also helps you emotionally and mentally as well. That's what I used to love doing is go out and run. Just go out there and run to clear my head and really kind of listen to my body and the world around me and just for my faith, listen to what God had to tell me. Because finally, I couldn't focus or do anything else except focus on running and just being quiet so he could speak to me, which always improved my mind. And I recommend it. You might not like running, but just try to get out there and do something for your cardio that can help improve you overall. And then, of course, strength training, getting in the gym or even just doing body weight strength training stuff. Just something of that nature to build resistance or have your muscles build resistance and grow. It helps your tendons, ligaments, all be stronger because you're putting that resistance on them through the movements you're doing. This, of course, lifting weights, like I said, using resistant bands, doing body weights, like I said, like push-ups or squats or lunges or things of that nature. Those are all strength training that you can do and you can do it without having all these excuses. You can do it in your house. You can do it in your bedroom, wherever it might be, just get some. There's so many benefits, of course, like I said, just getting stronger muscular with your muscles, getting stronger with your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, But doing that also helps improve flexibility. So as you're lifting through these range of motions, as you're doing these movements, you're also forcing some of your muscle fibers to lengthen. So it's going to help with flexibility, help with your performance, help with your ability, your joints. And so there's a lot that can help you with that. It it improves your balance and decreases risk of injury through falling and things like that. It also helps your bones because you're putting stress on your bones through pulling of the tendons. And so you strengthen your bones as well. So wolf slaw, things like that. So it has a lot of benefits throughout the whole body. And then, of course, it as well has mental and emotional benefits to it, just like running. So it's not just your physical health. It also helps your emotions and your mentality, your mindset. This is so crucial. People are just saying, oh, yeah, it'll help me get stronger. But it's going to help you feel better overall. It's going to it helps decrease depression. It helps improve confidence. It's all it's crazy what working out in some form or fashion can do. Because you feel better, even if the workout sucks, which we're going to talk about hit next. 
high intensity interval training or like CrossFit type stuff, like all, any workout sucks. It's going to hurt. It's because it's going to push your limits. But we always come away. I've always come away. Man, I'm glad I did that. I, it just puts me in a different mood. Even if I'm sore, I'm like, I'm, I, I feel good. I feel accomplished. I feel like I've gotten better. So it, that men, mental and emotional shift, as well as the physical strengths and health improvements you get from it, it's amazing. So figure out a way to do some strength training. The next is HIT, H-I-I-T, high interval, high intermittent interval training. We got that right. Tongue twister a little bit. High intensity interval training. So this is where it involves, it's hard ale, but you're also doing strength training at the same time, basically. It's just shorter workouts with higher intensity. So you think burpees, you think a bunch of lunges going right into push-ups, going right back into sit-ups. So you do so many exercises in a with so many reps as one round, and then you'll take maybe a 20 second break and you do it again. So this increases your time, but it increases your intensity, which again, helps you burn more fat because you get in the fat burning stage because your intensity level goes up and you're still getting a good workout. So these are convenient for a lot of people because you only really need 15 to 30 minutes, maybe. Again, this is super good for burning calories, improving cardiovascular health. So for example, if you just wanted to do like a cardio and burn fat, you would have to go past about 45 minutes of moderate intensity. So you could barely talk. It'd be a little bit of a struggle. You'd have a little bit of hard breathing, but you'd have to go past 45 minutes in a run to get to that fat burning stage. Whereas the hit, you can go for a lot shorter time because you're not gonna be able to talk or breathe very well because your intensity is so high. So you, the intensity level and duration correlate to the fat burning. So a lower intensity, longer duration will get you into the fat burning stage. Whereas, and this goes back to my athletic training nerdiness coming out, whereas the higher intensity, shorter time frame to get into that fat burning stage. So you just have to pick you have what you have time for, what you'd rather do. <laughs> and you can implement, you can do different types on different weeks and things like that. But HIT's a really good one if you have a short amount of time and you want to get a good workout. And again, HIT has been shown and proven to increase and improve your mental and emotional well-being, just like any of these. And it's not a size, it's not by accident. That's how we are created. That's what we are created to have happen when we get up and moving and do things. You think our ancestors, they were always active. They were always doing something, whether it was prehistoric, where it was fight or flight, where they either were out there hunting or planting or escaping danger or middle ages where they were growing their things. They were working. They were they never just sat down and watched Netflix all day. So back then their activity was constant. And that's why people are like, Chris, you've never gained weight. You're the same. I'm like, even if I don't work out that much as some other people, I'm fully moving. Like rarely ever do I sit down and just watch a TV show or a movie. And yeah, maybe it's maybe it's a toxic trick that I can't sit down and relax sometimes. But again, that's why I think I burn so much because I'm always active doing something here in business or taking care of family stuff or house stuff or just getting outside and doing things with the animals, like always on the go, always moving around so I don't sit. But that's that's the difference between generations ago to now. We have more access to comfort and relaxing. Where is the line of relaxing and laziness? Where is that line? That's a whole other episode. But so yeah, so you just have to do more physically with your body because you're not. You know, what, well, Chris, I got ten thousand steps today. More, most steps, I got twenty thousand steps today. Great, but that's in my, this is my opinion. That doesn't cut it. You're not going to see many results by just tracking your steps. Let's just do more. Work harder and you'll see. But the last thing you can implement too to improve health and wellness, and this is one that I really have to focus on more, is yoga because it's the whole body and it makes me have to stop and just be present because I'm not very flexible. That's my weakness. So I need to improve that. I need to improve my balance more and my breathing and meditation. All that combined is a great thing for me and I fight it because it it's, like I said, I'm not flexible. So that's a hard thing for me, but it, it's so good for everybody. If we could all improve our flexibility and our blood flow and our nerves would stretch by doing this, we'd see a lot of improvement there as well. So yoga is a really simple one you could do, like even right before bed, just it doesn't have to be a long yoga session, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's still something. Because yeah, it just, yoga helps improve your flexibility, your stability and improves your range of motion, helps your joints would help all you with lower back issues that are my, oh, my lower back hurts. Yeah, it's because we sit in our legs 90 degrees to our back and then our knees are 90 degrees to our femur our, and we're doing that constantly. So of course your, your hip flexors are shrinking because you're at 90 degrees. So they don't have to go as far. Whereas if you're straight leg, that's when, and then it pulls on your back. So again, nerding out with my past yoga, stretch, 
even if it's just in the middle of the day where you just do some stretches to counteract the sitting that you've done all day. So like a lunge almost. Just get out there and do some stretching and it'll improve your overall health and wellness. But again, I'm not a doctor. I used to be an athletic trainer, but that doesn't matter. Consult your doctor, consult your physician before implementing anything new. Again, this is just my opinion and suggestions, but again, get their medical professional advice before starting anything new in your workout. Again, Chris Anderson, this is Elevate Your Brand and you are your brand. So go out there, make yourself better, elevate, and we'll talk to you next time. And thanks so much for tuning into this episode today. If you found value at all from this episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It just helps us get this show, these messages out in front of more people. And don't forget to share this with someone who you think could benefit from listening to as well.